my name is Maimuna Jallo, and I'm a storyteller and a writer, but came to it via journalism, really. And I am the director of the And Then She Said show, and also curator of the Reimagined contest. And, um, and then she said is part of this whole idea that I'm calling reimagined. And what it is, is the challenge is to try and bring either folk tales or contemporary novels and to perform them in a way that's different. It's a way to attract new audiences, but at the same time preserve what is truly ours, which is an African oral storytelling tradition. Um, the Reimagined series started in my mind at least about two years ago when I traveled to Zanzibar and my mission there was to collect traditional stories. And when I got there, I was really struck by how many people under the age of 40 had never ever had a story told to them. Um, and when I asked people why that was, they talked a lot about the breakdown of the extended family, whereas before grandparents would tell stories, now, often, it's just mom, dad, and children living in one household. Another big difference is that women are now working. So where women would also tell stories in the evening, many of them come home from work tired. So slowly, this tradition is dying. And then, of course, the big killer is television. Uh, a lot of people said, oh, our children, they're not interested in stories. All they want to do is watch TV. But I find that that is just an excuse, because there's still no child that I have met who, when you ask them, would you like me to tell you a story, says no. So I think sometimes it's also just because it's easier to stick children in front of the television. Um, and oral storytelling is such a crucial part of our African tradition. You know, the griots in Senegal, they transmit histories, legends. You know, they carry the history of a family, a nation in their stories. Uh, and that's why people say, you know, when a griot dies, it's like a library has burnt down. Um, but at the same time, I found that traditional storytelling sometimes wasn't engaging anymore for children because often the stories, if they're old, the context might be different. Um, the messaging, although universal things like don't be greedy, sometimes it was very specific to the time and place where they were created. So the challenge with Reimagined is to say, let's use this traditional art form that we have and reimagine it in a way that makes it interesting for children today. When it comes to the And Then She Sent production, I thought, how can we bring novels to life and use an African tradition storytelling style to do it? And it all really started because um, the book that I interpreted, The Secret Lives of Baba Segi's Wives, is one of my favorite books ever. It's written by Nigerian author Lola Shonein. And it was just an opportunity to delve further into the book, to bring it a different kind of life form, you know, to, to interpret it in a new way. And selfishly, I just wanted to do that book. Um, and at the same time, I wanted to celebrate African women writers from across the continent. So we chose five novels. Um, we chose them according to geographic spread, when they were written. So we have a story from, you know, set in Somaliland, um, another one set in South Africa, one in Uganda, one in Nigeria, and one in Senegal. <laughs> Um, so the key thing was really to say, look at these amazing women writers from all these different parts of Africa and look at what they're doing. And I think it's been successful because one of the things that we do is that when we perform the story, we sell the books there. And uh, the bookseller always tells me we've sold a ton of books. So I think that by bringing the stories to life, people actually want to go back and read the books. So for me, anything that's about encouraging a culture of reading, a culture of literacy, is absolutely fundamental. Um, I was recently speaking to Muthoni Garland, who is one of the founding members of Story Moja, which is a collective in which they hold a literary festival, the biggest in Kenya, but they also have a project to take, uh, build libraries in schools. And she told me a very frightening statistic that, um, 25% of children in standard seven cannot read and write at standard two level in Kenya. And what that says is that we have a lot of work to do. And one of the ways that Story Moja is doing it and how we would like to do it as well is to bring books and stories to children at a much younger age. Um, my particular story is The Secret Lives of Baba Segi's Wives. It's an, a fantastic story about a man, a big patriarch. 
and he has seven children and he loves his wives a lot, but he's rather uncouth. He's a bit bush, yeah? Um, and through the story, you find out that all these seven children are not actually his and he's infertile. But the wives, in the hope of, you know, placating him and fulfilling their traditional roles, cook up really interesting stories and excuses and find other ways to get pregnant. And only at the end of the book do you realize and does he find out that none of these children are his. So it's a story about women surviving in any way that they can, being very cunning. Um, there are some incredibly sad moments as well when one of the women talks about her rape ordeal and so many women go through it, you know. And so to be able to raise these issues through li literature and then to bring them to a new audience through performance um, is an extreme privilege and I hope we can continue doing it. This show, I think, is very special. Everyone who has watched it has said, I'll come again. And to be able to sit through the same thing for two hours again and again, I think is testament to the fact that every single time something new comes out of the stories. And that's the beautiful thing about oral storytelling. It's the relationship between the teller and the audience. And every single time it changes. You watch a movie, if you watch it 10 times, you'll watch the same movie. You can watch the same storyteller perform the same story 10 times, and every single time it will be different. It's a fabulous way to discover African literature in a new way. It's not a theater production, it's not your traditional play, it's just that storyteller and the audience, and every single time they create a new form of magic.